Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming and for reading. Everyone's been amazing. And thank you and uh, congratulations to Aaron and Charlie and the Broken Sleep team, who I think have just done such an incredible job. Um, yeah, since they published me, it's just gotten bigger and better and charitable work and awards and great poetry. So yeah, it's great. Um, the first poem I'm going to read is, uh, it's not from the pamphlet, it's actually by another poet, because I think sometimes it's nice to read a poem by someone else, uh, but it's my translation. Uh, it's a French, um, originally a French poem, and the poet's name is uh, Benjamin uh, Fondan, and he was a uh, Romanian poet, Roman Jewish Romanian. Uh, he did most of his um, most important work in, um, in France, in Paris. Uh, he wrote philosophy, he wrote poetry and other stuff. He was an amazing man. And unfortunately, he, like too many people, was in the wrong place at the wrong time and he was deported to Auschwitz. But his, his work is being sort of rediscovered now, which makes me very happy because I just kind of instantly fell in love with his poems. When the shipwrecked traveler came at last to the island, having saved his toothbrush, pipe, liver trouble, and an old disbelief in miracles from the waves, time dissolved suddenly like the snowpack. Silence suddenly crackled everywhere. The traveler's blood became light and drunk, so drunk and so light that he went into things and things went into him in an incandescent thirst so vivid that his sight stumbled amongst visions, suffered vertigo, such strong hallucinations, ecstasies and revelations, so clear that he became afraid of himself, of becoming a spider or a wild strawberry, so afraid that he threw himself to his knees, praying to his God who was too great to do miracles, and let himself fall from a cliff into the sea just an instant before he would have received the gift of prophecy. So now I'm going to read some poems from my pamphlet and actually the first one is the one that um Aaron mentioned where we um it's on its you know it's on its side I didn't know this was the first time they'd done this I it was literally just like I think Aaron sent me the first typeset of the manuscript and I was like oh the lines aren't quite they're getting broken up on this one can we turn it sideways and Aaron was like sure <laughs> so yeah it 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 worked out great As though, we, as though we lived falling out of the skin into the soul. He had to fly into the storm because there was nothing but storm. Then there were stars and he tried to breathe in the pulse of their light. The flickering of stars is like the heartbeat before death. Airwaves for hours, the guidance, Tagore, Césaire, Neruda. Like a shipwreck we die going into ourselves. Then my own words translated my love translated. It was a small hope for him, small hopes, each a distant light, the great seas, the great sky, the tiny life between. We spoke poems in a time out of time on a breaking bridge of sound. I loved him and I wished I could weave a net of words like a net of stars. When the plane fell, he was calm. I saved him, but I couldn't save him. The stars shook, then shone without wavering. Now when they beat like a heart, I hear his voice. Berlin. These are streets where you could meet the dead or those you saw as dead. Faces flash through your thoughts, loved, misplaced from sight or memory. Their silver eyes opaque, preoccupied, brushing you with their indifference. You will never touch. A flock of bright trabants wheels past and there are no more eyes. It is a long way, the way has been long. You stumble at the gates whose flags and guards breathe out the west, neuter power, empty commerce, not revolt or joy. Darkness is fading to a new dawn or a pale misunderstanding. But in the Uban, the unexpected cathedral is pillared with sound and light, the accordionist transfiguring the end of night. Again, the dead and lost are watching, walking, 
toss their coins and move into the flow. They are still among us. Amidst memory's field of black pillars, still the long shadow of intent, conquest. The silver eyes of the dead will not let us forget. Uh, this next poem doesn't really have a title. From the dream break out of sleep, with a jolt of fear, or perhaps it was delight, which nonetheless can be shock, and with that shudder in the body which might be revelation, I woke up, turning and turning on the floor like a car's lights maneuvering in darkness, and asking myself, asking, asking, a question which is now outside memory. So uh, I'm going to read one of my Sherlock Holmes poems. I've written a lot of these, especially the recent years. I think the first time I wrote a Sherlock Holmes poem, I was like 15 or something. It's kind of my longest and most important obsession. Uh, I was thinking of putting them all into a pamphlet a few years ago, but I think it was like a little bit too much Sherlock. <laughs> But I think they work in kind of smaller quantities, and they're all they're all sort of inspired by different stories and different adaptations. Uh, this particular one is inspired by the um, CBS version the last few years called Elementary, uh, which has Holmes and Watson in um, New York, and Holmes is played by Johnny Lee Miller, and Watson is played by Lucy Liu, and it works really well which I wasn't expecting. I ended up loving it. It's called H. Tattoos bruise like shadows across the skin. The puzzle pieces fall through your fingers. Sometimes the past is more than a locked room. It's a locked phone and now you can't call her. They sent you a package full of prisons, thinking this time maybe the plan won't fail. But this morning you're out in the city depths, a sepia sketch on steel and concrete, friendship on your arm, covering the tracks. Um, so the last poem I'm going to read, I don't know, it's turning into a little bit of a, a bit like the Sherlock Holmes poems. Basically, I'm sort of curious to see if these poems are going to reach people or not, because ba basically a few years ago, I got quite obsessed with a uh, Soviet television series called 17 Moments of Spring. And it's, it's from like the early 1970s, but it's set during the Second World War. Uh, and it's very, very famous in former Soviet countries, but it's not well known in the West. It's kind of like a niche thing. You, you have to be into Russia and spies, which I am. Um, and... I start, yeah, so I've, I've watched that a few times, and I, I read a couple of the books in the um, series that it was based on. Um, the writer's name is Julian uh, Simonov, or Simeonov, um, and he, yeah, again, he's very, very famous in former Soviet countries and not very much known um, in the West, um, but they're very interesting books. They kind of I think they kind of subvert what you would what you expect from a book from this time and place because I think people from Western countries tend to think it was either Soviet writers were either dissidents, which he wasn't, uh, or they were simply sort of propagandists and everything was just to, you know, support the Soviet Union. And that's really not the case with this author. He's actually very much concerned with showing different viewpoints, and it's yeah, it's very interesting. But yeah, this is the last, this is the most recent poem I wrote, actually. Um, and the, the, the book it's based on, it. the title of the book is Diamonds for the Dictatorship of the Proletariat, which is quite a title. Um, and I was thinking of calling the poem that, but I decided instead to call it Brilliant Cut. Fish scale light, chainmail gold water. Estonia edges out into the gulf a final throw of rocks. Isayev and his friend have waded out. Waves carry sound, but they're so far now. They want to be fishers of men. They have the tools. Their minds flicker with codes, passports, 
cursed papers, door opening letters. But diamonds fall through their fingers. Diamonds fall from the sky, breaking into colors that break the light. They leave a mark on the men who walk into the water with faces cut like facets. <laughs>